so psalm 8 psalm 8 let's begin from verse 2 psalm 8 and verse 2 very deep contemplation that we have the psalmist was a very interesting man he understood the presence of god and even though he did not walk in certain ministerial dimensions as we know like samuel but as a king he was an interesting king he doubled as many things even while as a king he was a worshiper he was a man who understood the presence of god and he entered into prophetic realms that were even beyond the scope the jurisdiction of um that which came with his office it was him that saw some of these things that we're about to deal with so the bible says verse one really when you start it says oh lord our god and all of that um it begins to extol his name verse two says out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger verse three when i consider thy heavens the works of thy fingers the moon the stars and all which thou hast ordained now here's the question what is man he says that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him he says verse 5 thou hast made him a little lower than the angels the correct translation there is elohim not just the angelic kedah are we together thou hast made him a little lower than god and thou hast crowned him with glory and honor now he's describing man he starts by saying what is man you seem to be so vulnerable and mindful of man you are not ashamed to declare your vulnerability over man what is it that you have put in this man this mysterious entity who has secured your attention every once and again and he describes all that god gave to man thou made him to have dominion he says over the works of thy hands pay attention now and thou has put all things how many things all things under his feet verse, verse 6 we'll stop there thou has put all things under his feet now this is a reality as far as god is concerned whether that becomes an experience in my life or your life depends on another set of spiritual dynamics but that it is a fact that in god's designing man he designed man such that nothing that he created will be higher and above man are we together now Krida balantos ke vende sala sopranda kaparuska pregedi balakusia bedes sabina sola kusa pranda kaparusa pregedi balakata pranda kata balados ke brons ke manashadi las kofrens kapali kapratus ke pregedi balakusia benisia. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, technical people. May God bless you in Jesus' name. All right, so let's sit as we continue. No moment should be wasted in his presence. Hallelujah. Um, you'll be surprised what has happened to you within these minutes of praying in the spirit already. There is no waste in his presence. Provided your hunger, your passion is there. Um, God is always ready to visit. So we're discussing two things. We said how that man was made in the image and the likeness of God. A military man has both power and authority demons have power but they do not have authority you see that now so when he says behold i give you power it is authority and power the word exousia capacity the legitimacy to stand in my stead are we together this is very important now very quickly so that we save time i wrote two things here that i want us to really understand number one is the definition of dominion in simple terms that dominion is the right to govern the right to govern dominion talks about sovereign control dominion talks about authority so when we talk about the saints coming into a place of dominion we're talking about walking in the reality of that god-given right the ability to exert influence over the cosmos the ability to bring all things that were created by god in perfect alignment with his will now every time god gives man power and authority he also defines jurisdiction 
man does not have authority everywhere the domain of our, jury, our, our authority is well defined for instance we do not have power in the throne room there is no record of man having the ability to manipulate things there so the realm of our dominion is defined are we together when paul came he began to list all the realms wherein man's dominion um, reside so it's important for us to get that that dominion is the right to govern the legitimacy to exert power dominion talks about authority the implication of this is number one that man from the time god made the statement let them have dominion the implication of that statement is that man became the legitimate steward the legitimate ruler of the earth as simple as this statement sounds it is very profound because if you do not have this understanding you will Will not be able to walk in authority and experience that man not man and another creature not man and another spirit are we together yes there's only one entity of god's creation that was given dominion over the earth and that entity is called man i don't have time to describe for you what a man is but not every being god created can be called man there are conditions that must be met for any entity to be called man. Number one, you must be a spirit. If you are not a spirit, you cannot be called man. Number two, that spirit must be domiciled in a mortal body. If that spirit is not domiciled in a mortal body, it cannot be called man. Number three, there must be solical faculties that help that spirit to enjoy the duality of realms, to be able to enjoy the realm of the spirit and enjoy the physical realm. Any entity that has these realities cohabiting is called man. Demon spirits cannot be called man, even though they are alive. Animals cannot be called man, even though they have bodies. Are you seeing it now? So I want you to know that if you are called man, it's a special privilege. It's not an insult at all. It's an exalted name. It's a position. That's why God himself became a man to be able to save men. And today he's exalted and seated at the right hand of the father as a man. Are we together? Because based on the law of territory, if you do not have a mortal body, you are illegitimate in your operation. Is the reason why the Holy Spirit requires human bodies, even though He is God. Is the reason why demon spirits require human bodies. And when they cannot make do with human bodies, they will make do with animals and make do with other species. You must have a body to give you legitimacy upon the earth. Are we together? The reason why we know Jesus will return is because He left with His body. So He does not need a virgin again to give Him another body. He can return. We are assured of His return because He left with His body. The first time He came, He needed the cooperation of a woman so that His spirit will have a material flame, frame to legitimize His operation in the earth. But now the apostles told us that He levitated right in their presence to heaven. And he will return he said this same jesus he will return as you have seen him go are we learning already very very important man so it means that man is the legitimate steward of the earth that means in god's mind man has been put in charge this is very important but it's important to know that you've not been put in charge to do everything you want the jurisdiction of man's operation is with respect to the will of God. Your assignment as far as dominion is concerned is to be a conduit that becomes a perpetual um, manifestation of the will of God. You see that now? Everything within the kingdom revolves around the will of God. Now, the second implication of this statement, let them have dominion, that God said to man means that nothing can happen nothing legitimate should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and man's participation this is powerful nothing in the earth was designed to happen and can happen without man's cooperation and man's participation if you ever see anything good that happens in the earth 
there was a man to partner with the spirit of God if you ever see anything evil that happened in the earth there was a man the reason why Satan looks powerful is because there is still one human body cooperating with him the basis of his strength is his alignment with man are we together now this is why Satan's obsession for bodies was very clear in the Bible including the body of a dead man a body has thou prepared for me is someone learning already this is very important so nothing including what god desires to be done here tonight isn't it amazing that there are people right now who based on prophecy god has ordained that your healing is this night your lifting is this night and yet as powerful as prophecy is it must come in partnership with man to find expression the man in john chapter 5 pastor Akin, there was a man who was at a pool called bethesda it was not because there was no possibility of solution for that man are we together john chapter 5 the bible tells us that that man had been there for 38 years and then when jesus walked up to him and said will thou be made whole the bible says the man said i have no man not i have no god i have no man the reason why my situation has been prolonged here is that even though there is a possibility for my healing the man to walk in partnership with the will of god and make this happen is not there i have no man hallelujah this is very powerful so everything that happens on earth we enjoy the wonderful moment of worship it's not just this evening that god wanted to reach you with that atmosphere of worship is that the spirit of god as powerful as he is is limited by the cooperation of men this is profound when you know this you will know how god the position that god placed man in isn't it amazing that people will come all over in a crusade ground many who desire to be saved and yet they are never saved until a man is able to preach the gospel to their hearing angel gabriel came directly from the throne of god and yet the reality of Jesus' arrival was hanging in the spirit until a man be the conduit through which the word will become flesh. That means the more men are available to be used by God, the more the possibility for dominion and revival at a territorial level. Did you hear that now? The advocacy that God is not looking for men is very wrong. Very wrong. A body has thou prepared for me. The formula is always the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit has been saying revival. The spirit has been saying come. The spirit has been saying healing. But there are not sufficient men. And don't you think one man is enough? Mm -mm. I know we have the idea that one man is enough. You ask Elijah. Elijah was almost frustrated because he thought he was the only one. Mm -mm. If one man were enough, then the 12 apostles would be enough to finish the work. But he said this promise is unto you and to your children to as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call are, are we are we learning now because the concept of dominion must be seen as a concept beyond ministry beyond men of god beyond apostles and prophets every time we talk about walking in dominion and power signs and wonders and all of these dimensions in the spirit usually people shut down their minds and say i'm not called into ministry so we leave that mandate for the apostles i just want to be spiritual enough to have a good prayer life a good word life be a faithful person in church a faithful worker and that's enough no the mandate was not to be a church member the mandate was not to be an apostle and a prophet all of those descriptions are just the geography of the witness a witness is a validator men available to allow the program of god the purposes of god to come to pass in and through their lives so he said let us make man and in making man let us ensure that nothing happens on earth it is on this basis that we pray the prayer of the believer is predicated on revelations like this that nothing on earth should happen without the participation of a man that means if you allow things to happen in your life without cooperating 
You see that now. You have a right to vet realities in the realm of the spirit and select them by intelligence and allow the ones that must manifest. So if you wake up seeing yourself, for instance, maybe dying or in a grave, that is a proposition from the kingdom of darkness. They are working with your mind, needing your cooperation. It's not something that must happen. No, there is an immigration system from the realm of the spirit to the physical realm. The name of that immigration system is called man. If a man does not allow that revelation to pass, it will remain in the spirit forever. But because Satan knows that the saints are ignorance, he will manipulate your mind to think it's a done deal. And your discouragement is a gateway, it's a passage for it to manifest. Job said, the things that I feared has come upon me. That the spirit of fear became an illegitimate way of opening that gate. I hope you're learning already. This is very powerful. So every time God wants to move among men, he looks for men. I sought for a man. Ezekiel 22 and verse 30. I sought for a man. In Isaiah chapter 6, when he had an encounter with Isaiah, he says, whom shall I send and whom shall go for us? And he said, here am I, send me. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God is still looking for men. Don't you think the men he has are enough? And I'm not just talking of men. Uh, there is a kind of man that God is looking for. Men who can walk in the reality of dominion. Are we together now? You see, the reason why sometimes the program of God is aborted is because usually there are few men who have labored in the spirit to attain a level of stature that can host certain dimensions of God. And because they are few, and because the price to host that dimension of God is great, when those few men are attacked, the program of God dies within a generation. But the assignment is not just to have few men, it's to have many men. This is why the temptation of celebrity Christianity is very dangerous. Every time God anoints a man, your assignment is to raise as many men as fast as you can. Not just enjoy the stage. Because the more you raise men, it is for your own safety. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Imagine if Noah died on the way while building the ark. There would be no earth again literally the preservation of the earth was at the mercy of one man may god find many men many men that includes you in the name of jesus christ provided there was one jesus satan started moving through herod to look for him and kill him straight up because multiplication is a threat to satan he hates multiplication that is why he likes barrenness. It's not about a woman's womb unable to give birth. It is part of his advocacy to stop the arrival of men. Are we together? It's important for you to know that God is mighty. He can do without us, but he has incorporated us in his program. Now, people say that God needs men to give him permission. I don't believe that. Men do not need to give God permission. The earth is the Lord. However, they need to participate and cooperate with him. He is able to raise up stones. You see that? But God demands the participation of men. Listen, if you understand this, we can pray and share the grace and go. Because many believers are not yet convinced that they are important in God's program. They are convinced that some man of God or some worshiper is important. You see, if I ask you, is Pastor Joaquin important in God's program? You will nod a thousand times. But if I say, how about you? You may just say yes, but truly, many of us have not internalized it. You have not yet seen yourself as being significant in God's scheme of things. So the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 60 from verse 1, it says, amplified says, arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have put you. It says, rise to a new light. Arise, shine. Why? For your light is come. Your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Then it says, for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people but upon you the glory of the lord shall arise then it says gentiles i like this gentiles they shall come you will not look for them gentiles shall come to your light 
what kind of force will compel gentiles is called light it never said they will come to you you have been angry that they have not come to you there is no assignment for them to come and meet you it is the abundance of the light you carry that compels gentiles to come to you then it says they are kings to the brightness of your rising gentiles shall come to you and their kings to the brightness of your rising this is very powerful so dominion of man upon the earth means that nothing should happen in the earth without man's cooperation and man's participation now let's go very quickly to hebrews chapter 2 please give us five and six i want to answer a question very quickly and then we'll pray hebrews 5 and verse 6 please help us thank you jesus it says for unto the angels hath he not put in subjection watch this now the world to come whereof as we speak he repeats psalm 8 verse 6 now let's hurry up he says for as he said in another place thou, thou art a priest for me after the order of melchizedek we're, we're getting something wrong hebrews chapter 2 did i say 5 My, 2 from verse 5 please media help us correct that is hebrews 2 and verse 5 2 and verse 5 thank you for unto the angels had he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak aha uh -huh. he said in a certain place that certain place is psalm 8 he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him verse 6 it says thou hast made him lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor and you have set him over the works of your hands verse 7 it says thou hast put all things say all things in subjection under his feet it says for in doing so you left nothing that was not put under his feet but 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 now today in lagos in nigeria in africa now we do not yet see this is the question we have come to answer in this conference that we look at prophetic realities from god's standpoint and god is saying know this for a fact that i've put all things under your feet as far as i'm concerned the man on earth should exert dominion over elemental forces dominion over principalities and powers sicknesses diseases poverty failure everything that is antichrist should be compelled by the dominion of the saints but the bible says but now but now in spite of the scripture there's still a lamentation coming from the camp of believers but now we do not yet see all things there are some things that have stubbornly refused to bow like the diseases and the infirmities plaguing your body and they don't seem to respect your prayer life even though you are praying it looks like they do not want to go how about the poverty situation how about yokes and curses in spite of your confession i am free the bible says but now but now whether you walk in the area of dominion or not is up to you now and my assignment very briefly is to show you something tonight this is very powerful god is crying for a generation ladies and gentlemen that will be able to be a manifestation a living manifestation of god's intent and desire let me recap on two scriptures i shared with you yesterday ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 it says we are his workmanship we are his workmanship created in christ jesus it says unto good works which god had before ordained he's not scratching his head wondering to what to make out of your life my brother my sister hear me your destiny has been defined already lo i come he says in the volume of the book as it is written 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 it is already written that there are realms of the anointing you should walk in it is already written that there are dimensions of prosperity you should carry it is already written that there are levels of wisdom you should walk in his workmanship then Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 says now unto principalities and powers might be made known by the church the ecclesia the manifold wisdom of God 
Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 says, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared, watch this, with the glory that shall be revealed. There is a dimension of God's glory and power and wisdom. You know what glory is? Everything that makes God God, his wisdom, his favor, everything. The multifaceted dimensions that are captured in God is called glory. The glory of a thing is a description of why it is desirable, why it is expensive, why it is valuable. So when you want to understand the glory of God, you will have to dissect the attributes of God and study them one by one. His goodness, his wisdom, his riches, his power. And yet the Bible says our mandate in exerting dominion is number one, that we become a reflection in experience of the nature, the character of the Christ and then exert such tremendous level of power an authority over the cosmos that will compel all and sundry to come to Jesus. But let me tell you the truth. The context of Christianity we are selling to our generation is such that is grossly misrepresenting Jesus. In as much as we have done well, commendations to our efforts so far, the standard is still far short. Far short of what can bring revival. There were men like Philip who entered cities and in one day they shut the cities down. Not by making noise. Elijah did not say there will be no rain in his TV station. You did not need to hear. You would just know that there was drought in a land and say who caused this? One man. The Bible says time will fail me to talk of men like Gideon, Jephthah, Barak, men who faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions these were men these things were not parables they were men who walked upon the earth it is time for us to in addition to reading history become a continuation of the same and an improvement of the same we have read generals cover to cover we have read apostles and prophets in nigeria cover to cover it's time for a generation to become a living continuation of those things that men begin to study your life not for the purpose of personal pride but you become a mystery and a wonder first to yourself and then to a generation exerting power and glory that is incontestable is someone learning now now hear me dominion is not an impartation there is a grace that enhances men to walk in dominion but walking in dominion kingdom authority that elemental forces get to respect your voice he says jesus i know that means the realm of the spirit can know some people paul i know i hope i've elongated the list now joshua selman i know call your name there how dare they say they do not know that name You don't claim that realm. It's a revelation that brings you there. Are we together now? Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. Chapter 1 from verse 15. And he made certain definite prayer points. If you understand the Pauline epistle, it begins to create the framework for your walking in dominion. I wish we had the time, but this is a miracle service. But I want to give you five dimensions of knowledge very quickly that you must have if you want to walk in dominion it is impossible to walk in dominion no matter how well intentioned you are but let me assure you up front that in the name of jesus the spirit of grace has come to help this generation there is a standard god has for us and we will not fail we may look ordinary, but we are becoming. We may look ordinary, but we are evolving. One conference after another. One prayer meeting after another. One worship session after another. A little here, a little there. We are becoming. There is an evolution happening in the spirit. I want you to believe that if God brought you here tonight, it is because you are part of that prophetic army. And that paying attention is doing a generation good. because you see by the time God is done with us there is a formation of an army and there are allocations to regions for you God will say that family where death has killed people that is your allocation 
and you step in there like a witness that you are and say I hear that there is a cause that has recycled around this family but I come in the volume of the book I come as an ambassador forged out of fire and you will exert such dominion that big principalities and powers will not be able to stand <laughs>